Head over to BoardGamePrices.com to see the best prices and availability for thousands of games. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Each year, there's the biggest award in gaming known as the Spiel des Jahres, and this is in Germany. It's their game of the year, and the games that are nominated and the games that win will sell a lot more copies than they normally would. This is just sort of like the, the Oscars of gaming. And I recently did a, a video of talking about which games were nominated for this year, uh, and I, I went into which ones I thought would win, and I, I talked a little bit about the ones that were recommended, because I also come up with a recommended list, but I hadn't played one of the games that were nominated called Llama, and I hadn't played many of the recommended lists. I told you I'd do a follow-up video before the announcement of who actually won, and so this is that. So I'm gonna go over just a quick recap of what I think of the ones uh, that were nominated, which one I think will win. I'll also briefly describe the last game I had not played at the time, Llama, which I just did a review of uh, you know, a couple days ago. And I'm gonna talk about the, the recommended list because I went out and got, uh, I bought a bunch of these games from Germany. They came in, I had a chance to play them and I'm gonna sort of quickly review those for you as well. So here we go. All right, so in the last video when I talked about the Spiel des Jahres nominees, we talked about the three games, uh, two of them in detail. There's Just One, there's Where Words, and then there's Llama. Now I've already reviewed Just One and Where Words. I've done a, a you know, rule school teaching you how to play Where Words, and uh, I hadn't yet played Llama at the time. And now, just a couple days ago, I reviewed that. So I'm just gonna briefly describe Llama since I hadn't played it, but this is just a very light game, uh, sort of catered to that Uno crowd, where you're just simply, a number comes up and you're playing that the card of that number or the next number. And once it gets up to number six, you can play a Llama, which essentially is a seven, and then it, it goes back down to the number one. And you just keep going up and down this ladder sort of thing. And uh, in my review, I mentioned I, look, this is from Dr. Rainer Knizia, one of my favorite designers, and I really wanted to like this game, and because it's nominated here, because it's, it's Reiner, I mean, I'm going to take a very hard look at this game, but for me, it was just much too light, much too random, and I didn't feel like there were a lot of interesting decisions. I get if you're trying to sort of replace an Uno, I guess it could possibly do that, although I could see that some people might still like Uno better because of familiarity of it and the nostalgic value to it. I don't think Llama brings that much more to the table in that genre, other than just taking away the take that cards, okay, and, and a couple of interesting sort of little decisions of, you know, uh, points and, and when to go out and things like that, but it really, I'm really surprised that that one made the list. And I said in my, in my previous video that typically out of the three nominees of Spiel des Jahres, there's always seems to be one of them that isn't really widely available, that a lot of people haven't played, and it always seems like there's one that really doesn't belong. And in this case, as I hinted towards it might be the case last time, but I wanted to give it a fair shot, so I went and bought the game from Germany, played it, and, and, and what my suspicions were unfortunately were true because I really wanted to love the game. But it, it was just okay for me. It's not something I would seek out and play again. Uh, so I definitely don't think Llama should win, and uh, so, so that's how I feel about that. So now let's talk about my recommendation. Last time I, my, my, you know, my thinking, my prediction was that WereWords was going to win, because WereWords is my favorite of the three. Now, I love Just One. It's a fantastic game, and I love WereWords. If either one of these wins, it's going to be a great choice. The A lot of the people in the buzz around the industry is, is, is thinks it's going to be a hands-down win for Just One, and if it did win, I'd, I'd say, yep, it's a great game. I could see that winning. Um, but I personally like WereWords better. I think it just takes that 20 questions aspect with a good twist and it's just so engaging. And when you're done playing that game, you want to play it over and over and over and over and over. And you just keep wanting to play it. You can add or subtract people out of the group. It plays a wide player count and there's a lot more replayability of that than Just One. And Just One's a great game, but it's like, oh, we finished. It's a co-op game. And how many points did we get? Oh, it says you did pretty good. Try again. It's like, eh, it's kind of like not nearly as exciting as WereWords, but it is a great game. So I, my favorite still wear words and I'm still thinking and, and going with my choice that I think wear words will win the Spiel des Jahres. So let's get on to my recommended update. So the, the Spiel des Jahres always comes up with a recommended list. Usually it's five or six games. This year it was six games. Uh, and now I went off and bought a bunch of these, found some of these. Some of these are really hard to find. They're, they're some of the, you know, most of them don't ship to, to the United States. And so I got five of these in that I've played. I didn't place all six, but I played five of them. And I'm going to sort of talk about 
these five and from from the order of the ones I like the least to the ones I like the best. And let, so let's just talk about it because I was able to get all these and play them, most of them. So the first one was Sherlock uh, Death on the Fourth of July. Now this is a small little game. Uh, it, it's it's a uh, you know just a little cards and, and and essentially you're trying to solve a mystery sort of Sherlockish. And what happens is everyone gets cards and on your turn you're simply playing a card either to the middle of the table, which will have some evidence, or you're discarding the card if you don't think the evidence is relevant, and then you're drawing a card. That's it. And as things come up, sometimes you'll see maps, sometimes you'll see evidence, sometimes there'll be a story. You're trying to piece things together. It sounds like it's a good idea, but in execution, this game I did not like at all. There's so many good sort of puzzly games and escape room games and detective games and things like that out now that are fantastic that this one was not at all. I would never play another one of these. I, I can't believe this was on a recommended list. I felt like it was very random. You, you have to discard at least six cards uh, uh, to, to, if, or you lose the game, but you never know what to discard because it's like, you don't really know which clues are valid, which ones are not, you're just guessing. And at the end of this game, you're looking at all the clues and when you get to the solution, you're like, oh, the solution needed such a jump and a leap from some of the evidence to say what really happened that it didn't even really matter what you discarded or didn't. It was still such a leap of faith to figure out what actually happened anyway. The game was only 20 minutes. You can only play it once. I don't know. This was just a far miss for me. I would not, I'm not gonna play any more of these. There's too many other good games in this genre to play one of these. Uh, the next one was Dizzle. This is a roll and write game uh, from, I believe, Schmidt Spiele. And this is, uh, you know, this is very somewhat similar, by the way, it's being brought to North America by Stronghold Games. It's very, it, it's like one of those lighter games that I said is good. Um, it has multiple levels of difficulty. Uh, on, the, on the harder ones, there's cool aspects where you're sort of jumping to different parts, sort of teleporting your dice over different parts of the sheet. That was cool. Um, the rule and write genre is a very crowded genre now. There's so many of them out. When, when it first started coming out, everyone was jumping at every one of these. But now there's so many, you really have to do other things greatly to stand out from the crowd. I don't think this one did that for me. This one I would call sort of a sibling to another game from the same publisher, both Schmidt Spieler and Stronghold is bringing this over, called Encore. In Germany, it's called Knock Mall, N-O-C-H-M-A-L. I've reviewed Knock Mall and I really like that. That one stands out. Dizzle actually felt very similar to Knock Mall. You're going up, you're trying to get certain rows and columns done to get bonuses. You're going, you know, in, in you know, adjacent to different things when you roll dice and draft dice and get them. It had a lot of similarities to Knock Mall, but Knock Mall is so much better. I, Dizzle was just okay for me, not one that's going to, uh, that I'm gonna wanna come back to. Now the next one that gets a little bit better is Belrati. This is a game, it's like a, mis a game of like Mysterium, if, you, if you've ever played that, where it's one, uh, players are playing cards, have artwork, and other players are trying to sort of guess, or, or you know, play, they're trying to play cards that have to do with that theme. So it's a cool thing, because it's one of those sort of art uh, interpretation games. Uh, similar to Mysterium, but I like it because the, the cards are more simple. There's less staring at all the little intricate details of each of the cards. The game is a little more streamlined. Plus the rolls move around the table where one one round you'll be the one actually, you know, trying to pick which cards were from the players uh, and which ones were not. And the other, the other rounds, you're going to be the one playing the card. So I like how the rolls move around because essentially, you know, some players are playing cards that are supposed to fit the theme of the two cards that are out on the board. And the other players are trying to figure out which ones came from those players and which ones were fake that came from the deck. That's Belrati. And so it's just a really fun game. Uh, this one has got to have some legs, I think, especially anyone that likes the Dixit style or Mysterium style games. Uh, this is going to do really well, I think. And, and I believe that Repos Productions picked this up. And whenever they pick up sort of a party game, they do really good things with it. So I'm really looking forward to see what they do with this. Belrati, it's a really hard game to find now. I couldn't even get it off Amazon.de. I had to get it from... Uh, like a secondary market on Geek Market to get it. So I'm really looking forward to, to, to seeing what the, you know, the repost production version is of this. Uh, the next one is Emotep Duel. This is a two-player version, uh, implementation of the, one of the Spiel des Jahres nominees a few years ago of Emotep. Uh, and this is, you know, a great two-player game. It's a tug of war. It's a battle of wits. It's looking at what now versus looking what later. Uh, you're trying to build pyramids and obelisks and things like that. 
but each game you can have different goals because each way to score there's two ways to score everything the pyramids the obelisks in each game you can choose which side you want to play of that that scores it differently which gives you some different strategies but the game is sort of abstract in the way and very puzzly that every time you play the game it's going to be different anyway now i've already reviewed this so if you want to check out that review i'll try to remember to put the link in the description of this video to learn a little bit more about this but emotep duel was a fantastic game absolutely good on this list to be recommended on uh, the last one probably the one i like the best is reef this came out from uh, next move games sort of the in that line of games of azul and things like that this is sort of an abstracted strategy game where you're you're building your own reef uh, and you're trying to score cards you got to play cards to add reefs but you're also playing those uh, you know scoring the cards that you play sometimes you have to play cards to set yourself up and you're looking at synergies of those cards you're looking at the board you're trying to link together a bunch of moves that will score you things and it's a it's an abstract strategy but it's a very very good one i'm not going to go into too much more detail of it here because i've also reviewed that uh, uh, last year and so i'm going to put that link below here you can check that video out too so reef was my favorite of the recommended list reef or emotep duel if either of those two were actually nominated instead of llama i would have been like yes absolutely the other ones i could see bell might have might have been a good choice to, to slot slot in there instead of llama as well uh, either one of those three choices would have been good uh, but so so i hope that this video has helped you sort of Figure out which one of these games of all the recommended nominees are the ones that, that you might want to sort of go for. Uh, and by the way, I'll try to put all the reviews of the ones that were nominated uh, as well in the description of this video. So this is sort of a, a you know table of contents video, if you will, giving you some directions to see which ones you want to learn more about. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love. This video was shot on a Game Topper, the ultimate gaming accessory. After successfully fulfilling their first Kickstarter, Game Toppers are taking the world by storm. Now you can get your own portable gaming top by participating in Game Toppers Kickstarter 2.0 starting June 25th, 2019. New styles, new sizes, and amazing new game mats. Go to GameToppersLLC.com to enter a full Game Topper system valued over $1,000 to also bring you to the Kickstarter project page and to Late Pledge.